Hey, what's up, guys? We're back with Feedback Fridays, episode three, and um, we're going to listen to some more of your tracks and give you some feedback, and I'll tell you what I think is good or bad about the song, and hopefully give you tips on how to improve your production. We've got a few more submissions, but let's go back to the first couple of people that submitted, because uh, I saw in the comments that some of you are pretty angry <laughs> that I haven't... Um, reviewed any of these yet or oh, i did that one but this is the best randomizer situation i can come up with just me shutting my eyes and moving the mouse around but here we go okay mad red mc this might not be the kind of track you're expecting it was made entirely in fl studio using ewql symphonic orchestra let's check that out all right finally an original song let's let's have a listen i can't say that i've ever really listened to a symphony before <laughs> so Sounds like the, um, you know, the beginning of a Zelda game or something. Ocarina of Time. I've actually never heard of that plugin. What did he say? EWQL, Symphonic Orchestra. I haven't heard of that. Sounds really nice though. I feel like I'm a bit underdressed for this occasion. I don't know. <laughs> Should be wearing a uh, tuxedo or something. Well, musically, it sounds really good. I mean, I'm not hearing any bung notes. Little call and response there. So who's going to be the first person to download this song and remix it? <laughs> He's got the download button ready there. Someone make it into a trap song. <laughs> make sure you sidechain those drums there. Alright guys. Alright. I think we've heard enough of that one for, for today, but um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know many producers that do symphonies, so um, good on you, mate. Go on, son. I'm not sure what to say. The plugins sound great. All the music that you um, compose there, all the notes seem to be pretty like in scale or in key. So let's click the next one. All right. No message, just the link. Let's take a listen. Dubstep song. It almost sounds like a savant inspired song with the pirate sort of theme, which is pretty cool. Those horns, they sound pretty sample packy. I wonder if there's a way that you can make them sound a little bit more natural, like without actually going and getting someone to come into your studio and play those horns. There has to be a way with whatever plugin you're using to, you know, massage those horns a little bit to make them sound a little bit more natural. I'm not sure. I like that little sample in between those two phrases. That was cool. Success. <laughs> that was cool. So first impression is it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Love all the sound design that you've got there, all the bass lines and stuff. Uh, lots of different notes happening. 
I guess the build up wasn't like it there wasn't enough anticipation before that drop. I I wasn't sure where the build up was going to be actually. Was there a build up even? <laughs> So there's a bit of a white noise sweep and then a little drum roll, but I feel like you can build even more tension and anticipation before your big drop, you know. Maybe what you need to do is, you know, have this little reggae section with the horns for a bit and then break it way down to like a um, really like a and then you like break it real down and it's all quiet and then suddenly the drums start increase like intensifying and then the white noise sweep and then uh then you got the drum roll and your reggae vocal sample there rude boy and then it drops you know i think that'll make the drop feel more intense it just feels a little bit underwhelming how it just kind of like comes in out of nowhere almost not enough anticipation <laughs> Alright, this lead sound is fucking sick. I love that. <laughs> if you've actually played that and it's not from a sample or something, that's awesome, dude. I reckon that should almost be like um, featured in the in the beginning, like in the in the breakdown that I was talking about that doesn't exist in this song right now, but you should totally put in. Um, I reckon you should have that lead sound as part of the building of the anticipation before the drop. But yeah, that like that's super cool. I would put that closer to the front. Oh, Moombaton style. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. That's that's like the anticipation that I was talking about. You know, I was like, oh, something's about to happen. You know, like, how come that isn't before the, f the first drop, you know? I reckon, like, you should cut this, like, lead and everything and put it over here. I like that little Moombaton drum change up. That was a nice touch. Alright, so I guess the other thing I should comment on is um, all the sound, like all the sound design sounds really cool. I'm not sure if you've um, designed all those sounds yourself or or taken those sounds from a sample pack, but regardless, there's plenty of variation there and I, I really, I, I don't know what sound is about to happen next, you know what I mean? It's all very varied, very varied. Um, <laughs> but what I think isn't varied and which should be varied is like the little like I don't know, the reggae skank in the back, dink, dink, dink. I think you should take that out in some places to like really draw the listener's attention to the bass lines in the really intense crazy parts and then bring it back in. You know, I think it's all the way through the song that what that skank sound. Even in the breakdown. Ding, 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 ding. So yeah, maybe take give the listener a rest from the skank. Like what I think that skank should only be during the breakdowns and the part with the horns and the rest of this like baseline section should be uh skankless. Or or change the skank. I don't know, just some ideas. Really really good crack at a at a track there, man. I think it's um pretty decent. And again, like I I love my drums like really 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 punchy. So uh 
maybe do a bit more side chain on the kicks and snares. Actually, let's just have a Kalisa listen. Yeah, they're sitting pretty far back in the mix. A bit more side chain on the kicks and snares will uh, really make them sound punchier and bring them closer to the front of the mix because, again, it's the driving force of the track. But yeah, really cool, man. Like it. Good job. Let's try, just for a change here, let's try uh, one of the newest tracks that have been submitted here. That one. Hey, hey, wh whoa. Are you submitting two tracks at once? Which one do I choose? Let's go with the full song. First flight, Tropical. I know that break beat. That's uh, Isaac Hayes, I think. Let me turn this one up. like some Thievery Corporation kind of stuff. I don't know about the snare. I think <clears throat> it doesn't really suit the song. It's a, it's a weird like slappy clap snare. I think like a rim shot would sound like a like a rim shot would sound a little bit nicer or maybe just a, a really simple snare would be um, nicer but it's very floaty very nice um, chill song here I think this, this lion person's coming on to you, bro. <laughs> so what I'm curious to hear in this song is, is how much um, actual variation we have. I'm really excited to hear what goes on down here now. Okay, that's a really nice sweep down to like introduce the the breakdown. And I love the little female um, vocal chops. You can't quite hear what she's saying. It's in the background. Yeah. All right, we've brought it way down to just the, just the skank and a little drum roll. I actually really like this. Okay. I think this is still building a small amount of anticipation. You don't want to like induce anxiety in people with a song like this though. Smooth transition in here. Okay, that kind of just goes back into what we were hearing before. What I really would have liked to hear there is like a key change where, you know, all the, the baseline notes change to something a little bit different to like show that the song has like a progression or an evolution, like you've broken down and then you come back and it's a new life or some hippie stuff like that. I think that would have been really nice and would have taken the listener by surprise. And just something about the snare. I'm not, I'm not super into the snare. I don't know what it is, but I think a rim shot would be better. But yeah, cool. Thanks for your submission. I appreciate it. It's a really cool song. Yeah, there's a big chunk here where I haven't done any. <laughs> Look at all these people. All right, let's choose one out of here. That one. Hi, Slink. I'm definitely a fan, dude. Love your style and you have a great technique. Would be awesome for feedback on either of my last two tracks. I'm happy with them, but there is room for improvement for sure. 
Okay, which one do we choose? I said, send me one song. <laughs> this one's got a turntable as a picture, so let's go with that one. Nope, let's not go with that one. <laughs> let's go with this one. Dan James. An electronic tune. Oh, and we have like a featured uh, singer. That's, that's interesting. Okay, lots of anticipation. I'm liking um, the mix down on this song. Um, it sounds like you really put a lot of effort into mixing this one down. Let me just listen to the drop again. Okay, those last two notes in that f in that phrase kind of sound a bit off to me. It just kind of goes up again. I, I kind of was expecting it to sort of continue going downwards, like. What note is that? Yeah, it is that note. What the heck? So you're you're Nah. That doesn't sound good. I, it should be like this. Yeah. Like that's that's where I saw that melody going, but it's like these random notes. I mean, are they technically in the scale? I think it's in C minor, yeah. And you're choosing, um, you know, C sharp, D flat, which is not in the scale at all. Um, but the G sharp, uh, A flat that you're choosing is in the scale but it's what is that though it's a sixth which is kind of a weird note to be ending your phrase on so yeah maybe re maybe rethink the notes sorry to like go on a bit of a tangent there but uh it really irks me when when um great producers that do like really nice mix downs and sound design and everything like that just lack a, a little bit of like if they just brushed up a little bit on their musical theory i think it would sound much better Anyway, let's. I've only listened to uh, a minute of this song, so let's continue. This is a cool breakdown. All right, here we go. Lots of anticipation. We've got the, the build-ups and breakdowns pretty well solid there.
That almost sounds like scratching. That's really creative. The main sort of bass sound could be a little bit more developed. Just put a little bit more effort into creating different movements inside of the bass line because um, it's just like a static sort of note that's just going mm, 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 mm. You could make it a little bit stabby or just like have it kind of swell or not sure um, what to change about it, but it just sounds a little bit dry. Everything else sounds very wet and like echoey and, and vibey. Um, so it's just that one sort of bass sound that just sounds a little bit dry. I think just, yeah, maybe try using a different um, oscillator. Maybe a bit of a chorus or phaser would help create some movement. Not the, in the deep sub range, obviously, like in the higher part of this of the bass. You'd have to do some frequency splitting. But yeah, I like what you did with the voice with uh, Claire Knight's um, vocals there. You're really nailing like the breakdowns and buildups in your song here. Mixed down wise, it sounds pretty good. I think, again, my only comment with the mix down would just be more sidechain. Dang, everyone needs to learn how to sidechain. I think the only person's song that I've reviewed so far that nailed the sidechain was um, that 15-year-old dude with the song Poi. That was just perfect sidechain. Actually, I think someone else had really good sidechain. Maybe the Chill Pill song? Yeah, those guys got the sidechain game down. If you haven't seen those songs, check out episode 1 and 2 to hear... Uh, how side chain should be done. All right, so we've got time for one more song. Let's do something from this page. Yes, Link, I'd love to get your feedback on this tune, bro. It's finished for the most part, but could still do with a little more work. If you've got any suggestions on anything I should add or change or whatever. All right, let's check it out, dude. Scruffy. Good job. All right. It's a nice intro. Nice chords and stuff. Okay, we've got a lot of anticipation happening here. Can't wait to hear what happens over here. <laughs> I think maybe this intro is a little long, dude, but it still sounds really nice. Is that a cat right in the breakdown? So, so far, no complaints with any um, notes or musical elements. It all sounds like in key and um, loving all the sound design and the cat samples. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think the intro is a bit long. I'm just looking at the total length of the song and five minutes is a bit long. So, um, you can definitely cut this intro in half, I would say. But yeah, so far, I love how you've come in with like a big drop and it's like pretty bassy. And then you've like sort of broken things down a little bit afterwards. So, let's continue listening. <laughs> Oh, 
Chip tune, I love it. It's like really swung as well, which is interesting. I wonder how that's gonna fit into the rest of the song here. All right, you kind of like introduced like a triplet sort of groove there with the chip tune. And I think it would have been really, really dope. I was hoping, I was really hoping, but it, I think it would have been really dope if you'd had like a copy of, of this first section, but made it like a triplet groove, you know? Let's keep listening anyways. <laughs> The only difference I can tell between this section and this section is there is a bit of a lead on top, uh, which I don't think is a, is enough of a variation to really warrant having this section even here. You know, we, we've got a long song here, so I'd maybe think about what kind of point are you trying to get across? Have you already gotten that point across? And do you even really need that section? Or are you just rehashing something that you've already played? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, so I feel like this breakdown here where it breaks down, I think from there to this to the beginning of this breakdown should just straight up be deleted. What do we got? 3 minutes there. Yeah, so you could take a you could easily shave a minute off of this song cuz nothing really changes in this breakdown. I love the chip tune um triplet stuff, so you could somehow like introduce that into this breakdown. Uh, but let's see where this goes. Alright, lots of anticipation, this is really good. Good build up. Alright, so there's a couple of new bass sounds in this section, which is really cool. Um, what I think you could do to help the listener realize that they're listening to something that's quite different to the first section is have a kind of like stutter sound at the beginning of that phrase or change the very first sound to like introduce that new like neuro bass that you've just put in there. Like make that the first sound, like like a kick and then just like and then snare and then into the rest of it. Like, yo, check it out. I'm about to do some neuro stuff and here we go kind of thing. I think you could also experiment with the melody and the chords that are like coming in. Um, I think you should try experiment with the timings of those and the lengths of those chords that are stabbing in. You know, making them shorter, like or something like that. I don't know if like making sounds with my mouth is really helping you there, but um, I, hopefully you understand what I mean. Those neuro sounds actually in the mix sound quite a bit louder than everything else. Maybe you should have that neuro bass going into a bass bus where all your other basses are also going into and have that whole sort of group channel or bus compressed. Uh, if you're using Ableton, I would just slap like a glue compressor on top and make sure that roughly all the sounds going into that are around the same volume. And I think... Like, while I'm talking about mixed downs, I think you should also do a little bit more side chain with the kicks and snares. I think I should just do a tutorial on how to like make your drums sound really, really big. 
because it seems like a lot of you guys are struggling with drums in general. I'll see if I can come up with something for next week maybe. Right before this drop over here, how you've got that little cat meow. Why not use a different meow for the second drop, you know? It's the same meow. Come on, you can find another meow on YouTube or something. Really cool track, man. Your sound design and the whole idea around the track, the theme of it is really cool. It's kind of funny, but also like makes me want to dance and stuff. Um, so yeah, really good shot, dude. And it looks like you put a bit of effort into your logo. That's really nice. So keep it up, dude. Cool. So just reading a couple of comments on um, the last video, a lot of you guys are saying that I should try and get my mic volume the same as the SoundCloud volume. It's really quite difficult because everyone has their song mastered a little bit differently, especially when you guys are beginners and some songs are quieter or louder than others. So it's, it's hard to balance it. But I've tried to do it on the fly this time, so hopefully it sounds a little bit better this time. <laughs> a couple of people were like mind blown that I'm actually 30 years old. Yes, I'm 30 years old. I don't, I, maybe I don't look 30 years old. I don't go outside very much, I, I guess. Never trust a producer with a tan. But yeah, just uh, in general, all your comments seem pretty positive, so I appreciate that. Um, I always read all the comments, so thanks a lot for uh, commenting and watching the video. I'll see you next week. Peace.